Welcome to Isan, we are here. There's been a family emergency, so this is a bit of a rescue mission. When I was working in Koh Samui this week, Lili got a call from the village, her grandma's house where the three nephews live. There's been a roof collapse, which means it's almost completely uninhabitable. So last night we jumped in the car and drove the 10 hours up here to see what we can do. It's deteriorating so badly that everyone has to move out of the house before repairs could take place. So the obvious short term solution was to build like a temporary house out of the garage. Seven hours? Seven hours. Two hours, two and a half hours to go. Yep. That's where your daughter was born? Yes. We're just gonna pop into 7-Eleven and get some supplies that the kids might need for tonight. Mosquito coils, essential. I think there is a power connection there, thank the Lord. So we're gonna take a couple of light globes off. All right, so we're on the last leg, the last 18 kilometers. At the moment we're on bitumen, but the village is all dirt. So it can be a little dusty. Here comes the dirt. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> if you've just joined this journey recently, my girlfriend's name is Lili. She grew up in rural Thailand in a remote village in Isan. Her younger sister married a British businessman and they had three little boys. Tragically, the British dad became addicted to yaba and other drugs and killed Lili's little sister during a psychotic episode and then himself, leaving the three young boys orphaned. The three boys now live in the village with Grandma, while Lily and I send as much money as we can. This week, Grandma's roof caved in due to termite damage, so I send every cent I have up here to build them some emergency accommodation. And I'm desperate to check on the progress. That's us, just in there, behind the rubber plantation. There's Mum, I can see her with her headlamp on. They're very happy. Sorry, cup! Sorry, cup, boys! Mean! <laughs> How are you bro? You good? What is this dog? Hey, sure, sure. Yeah. Who, who is this? Did you get a pet cat? Which door do we take? That one from Lee, like a chicken chip. If anyone's watched this channel for a while, you might recognize this as the carport, the garage that we erected the tent in and stayed in for a week last time we visited. So this was the obvious place for us to throw some money at and well good on you Bradley. Get some light happening in here. Well it's 6.30 in the morning and we survived night one in the garage conversion. You can hear that dog yelping. That was the dog that you saw in the footage when we arrived last night. And during the night he was yelping and I got up and gave him some water and fed him but it wasn't until this morning that I saw what the real problem was. He has a massive abscess on his back hip. It looks like he's been in a fight with another dog and it's a bite mark that's become infected and now he has full paralysis on his back left leg. No movement at all. My first guess is he may have sepsis. I don't think he's long for this world. All right, after all that, nobody's moved in here yet. This is going to be Grandma and the two youngest nephews, the twins, their room. And I paid extra money to get a double set of windows so it's not pitch black in here. And next door, this will be uh, the 12 and 13 year olds room. So Lily and I stayed in here last night. And what really frustrates me is the, and this is really typical of this village and I think probably all of Isan, is they'll build the, the walls but they won't have the walls touching the roof. Any reptile, any insect can come in Call me a city kid, but it's just an adjustment when you're staying here. I'm happy to hear that the kids this morning, they went off to school, so we won't be seeing them till three o'clock this afternoon. In fact, I might get to go pick them up. My egg, I need egg. Egg? Oh, for you. Where from? Uh, the shop. Oh shit, whose bike can I take? Yeah, get whatever, this one. 
I don't feel comfortable like just using someone's bike without asking while they're over in the farm. There is a key in here though. I'm not gonna take that one. I'm gonna take this bike I used last time. Uh, don't say anything about the no helmet, okay? There, there wouldn't be a helmet in a hundred miles around here. There's an old friend up ahead we better say hello to. Sadikab. Falung is back and he is definitely the only Falung in the village. Uh, Kai. Kai Kai. Kai Kai. Kai Kai. My me, ha. My, my me? How are you? Do you know where I could find some eggs? No eggs here, so we'll keep looking. Oh man, dead snake. Took him off the road. Man, in the sun, he's got all these blue flecks through him. Beautiful. I'm trying to edit this stupid video to make some money pay for all these shenanigans. So we're off to pick up Lily's daughter from school. She's just started essentially year seven, like uh, junior high school. I am fascinated to see what a uh, high school looks like. Are you enjoying your ice cream? Go that side. Go, Go here? That side, yeah. That's the school bus there? Yeah. And stop here. Stop here? Yeah, they're looking for me. Hey, found her. Come back out like him too. Okay, Lord. What completely spins me out is like the young girls and boys riding away from school on their scooters. When I was in year 12 or whatever, I had a shitty old car as well, but man, these kids look younger. So here's a fascinating bit of politics. We pulled over in town to buy a bunch of meat and a few beers because Lily says that she needs to do a barbecue for her close family in the village, well, the extended family, rather, so they don't get jealous and they don't talk shit about her building a house on her sister's property. Even though it's basically an emergency and the house is falling apart and everyone else here, their houses are fine. Go figure. Last time we visited the village, we came to this market. Now this market is not in the village. In fact, there's no markets in the village. There's, there's very little in the village. You have to travel about 18, 20 kilometers where you can find produce like this. Terrific. <laughs> How much for fly? <laughs> Lily's 13 year old daughter's just like, oh my god, who is this guy? Would you eat that? No. Oh, what do you call him in Thai? Hua Lam Tao. I love the baby eggplants they get here. The village is getting their pound of flesh from us this week. Hoi hoi, what's that mean? Oh, that's mushroom. They, oh, they're snails. I don't think they get many foreigners in this market. This is a school bus in front, but the school kids ride on the top of the bus because there's not enough room downstairs. Home sweet home. What on earth are you doing? It's a murder. You want to murder me and take all my money, right? Are you happy? I have nothing. Well, I, have... I think I, I put your leg up. After this trip, I have tw I have thirty-five dollars in the bank. <laughs> That's a true story. Plow it, baby. It's a paramedic helicopter. Look, there's a sick patient there. Down goes the back door. Sick lady. That's... So good. I like how you guys share it. These boys had a Falung dad and they had a Thai mom. 
they don't anymore. Um, and it absolutely warms my heart to see them engaging in what is a pretty flung game in the absence of their father who would have had that sort of influence on them. You've got the other ones. You guys started all of them. So after I went to bed, the kids got together and did these. Dad life. <laughs> Who's cooking the, the pork? Oh, there. Master Chef. And there's the Leo, we bought the box of beer. Look at these two. Now the 12-year-olds are driving. This is fun. I just have to park any ego, anything like that. And, um, and just absorb and observe and participate where I can. Oh gosh, it's raining. We're moving. The heavens have opened. So we just slipped inside. 